Hi everybody, welcome back to term two, lesson two of Hizzy. I'm going to start off the lesson by reminding everyone if I'm not looking directly at the camera and I'm looking at the computer in front of me or the screen ahead of me, I apologize. I'm trying to manage all of the different screens and stay on top of everything. There are going to be some times where I'm going to ask you guys to hit the pause button on the video to do some um, written tasks. Once those tasks are done, you can wait until the end of the lesson to send all of your work in at one go. If you're working on a computer, I would love it if you could submit your, um, your Google Docs or your Microsoft Word document to the Google Classroom as a completed task. Or if you're working with pen and paper, get mum or dad's phone, maybe even your phone if you have one, take a photo and then upload that onto the Google Classroom so that I can see the work that you've done. So today we're going to start with the, the deeper content of our lesson, of our, not our lesson, sorry, of our term. And we're starting off with our learning intentions and our success criteria. So by the end of the lesson, hopefully you guys can do all of these things that we have in our, have in our learning intentions. So hopefully by the end of the lesson, I can, you can show what you know about ancient Egypt, understand what different roles people had in ancient Egypt and understand the difference between ancient and modern. And I'm going to change that and write between the terms or the words ancient and modern. Now we're going to do this through a mind mapping activity. A, we're going to draw up our own social pyramid as we talk about the different groups in ancient Egypt societies. And we're going to have some questions and answers that I'm going to upload to the Google Classroom. There are going to be some things that I do expect you to have written from today's lesson, but that won't be everything. Now I'm going to disconnect my keyboard so that I can write from my, um, my computer. Now what I have here is what I'd love to see in your workbooks. So we're going to start in the middle of our page and write ancient. Egypt. If you want to put a circle around that, you can. If you want to put a square around that, you can. Whatever you'd like to do to have that in the middle as the important part of, as the focal point, sorry, of our lesson. I'm going to be honest, I regret doing that because now it looks messy. So I'm going to hit undo, 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 undo. But I'm going to stick with my circle. What I want you guys to do. I want you to draw lines coming out from ancient Egypt and write down all of the different things that you know about ancient Egypt. So everything will have its own line. Now, if you run out of space and you write things on the edge, because you can't see that because of my head, if you write things on the edge and you can't fit it in with a line, I don't mind. Not everything has to have a line, but I just want to make sure that we're writing everything that we can think of about ancient Egypt. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to ask all of you to hit pause on the video, write ancient Egypt in your workbooks. And I want you to have a bit of a brain dump, write down everything that you can think of or that you already know about ancient Egypt. Hit that pause button, get it done now. Now he's hoping that you hit the pause button and you have completed the task of your mind map. What upsets me a little bit is that you guys always have such amazing answers when it comes to giving out um, things in a mind map. There are things that I will admit, even I forget about that you guys give me that reminder that you guys tap into and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So as I look through all of your mind maps, I'm going to be really excited to see all of the different and amazing things that I see in there. So let's start with some of the things that I know about ancient Egypt. And I don't know everything, but hopefully I know a lot of things. So the first thing that I always comes to my mind, and I don't know why, whenever I think of Egypt, Egypt is in Africa. It's on the continent of Africa. Egypt has pyramids. Mummies.
pharaohs, servants, they have the sphinx. If you're not sure what the sphinx is, it's kind of like a human head with a lion's body. That's an absolutely terrible drawing and I apologize. I always say I am the absolute worst drawer that you will know. But while we're at it and we're drawing things, there's my pyramid, something that I can draw half half decently. So we've got Pharaoh's servant sphinx, Africa pyramids, mummies. The Nile River, which is the big river that flows through the center of, of, um, of Egypt. Floods, because the Nile River floods and that's where they do a lot of their farming. Desert. Now, a lot of the things that you might have seen about like showing us ancient Egypt might have come from cartoons or some other different forms of media. And desert is one of the things that I always see whenever different cartoon characters have an episode or a, um, you know, a thing in, in Egypt. The other one, and this one might not always be in the forefront of your mind, cats. We're going to look into a little bit this term about why cats are always around everything that ancient Egypt. Um, they have a whole bunch of different gods. Um, Osiris. Isis. And no, not the one that was in the news. There's a whole bunch of different gods that we're going to look into. Um... To tag on to mummies, mummification and burial, that's a plus sign. I'm not going to be lazy, I'm going to write end. Um, one of the really, I was going to say cool, but I suppose not everyone would think it was cool. One of the kind of cool things that we know about ancient Egypt and when they mum uh, mummify people is that they stick a hook in through someone's nose to pull their brain out. <laughs> I hope that my brain is too big to come out through my nose, but I suppose it's um, we'll find out if, when and if I get mummified. Are there any other things that stick into my mind when I think of ancient Egypt? So here's the thing that you might not know. Ancient ancient Egypt, so old ancient Egypt, <laughs> had two different groups that became one group. There were two separate groups of people, and they each had their own religions and their own beliefs, and eventually they merged together under one of the pharaohs. They unified or brought together, made one, the two different groups of Egyptian people. Now, if there is something that you had on your... Uh, I knew that. See, there's always something that I forget. Papyrus. Papyrus is um, one of the first forms of paper that the uh, ancient, Egypt's, ancient Egyptian people made and created. And I forgot the other thing that I was going to write. What was it going to be? Papyrus and hieroglyphics. So hieroglyphics is what... They're kind of what the ancient Egyptians used to write or to explain their messages with. They're painted on the walls in pyramids. And we're going to have a look at some point in the term at some of the different hieroglyphics. Now... If there was anything that you have not, you don't have in your personal mind map, I'm going to ask you to write it in. And if there was something that you had that I didn't have, 
I would love it if you could give it a little underline for me. Highlight what it is that you had that I didn't remember and so that I can see it when I'm marking your work. One of the other things that, that I would love to see, I'd love to see your version of the Sphinx that hopefully looks much better than mine and your version of a quick pyramid. Um, I was going to make a joke and somehow I'll bring in Brendan Fraser and the Scorpion King because they were like kind of like themed around ancient Egypt, like current Egypt, but yeah. Anyway, the mummy. So, hopefully as you guys have finished that activity, you have shown me and shown yourself what you know about ancient Egypt and we've done our mind map. Now we're going to have a look at some of the different roles that people had in ancient Egypt. Um, where did my... I'm going to close that because I don't know what that was. So we're going to draw up a pyramid of our own. And I hope that I have enough space in this pyramid. So when we look at the ancient Egyptian society, it was broken up into five main groups. I'm trying to work out where I am on the camera. There I am. Five main groups. So we're going to break to one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to make my pyramid 3D just because I can. Now, as we get to the top of the pyramid, you might notice that the space gets a lot smaller. That's because as we make our way higher and higher into the pyramid, there are fewer and fewer people that can fit into it. So in the bottom, at the bottom of our pyramid, over here, we have the most people in the Egyptian society. But at the top, we have the fewest. So in your workbooks, I'm going to ask. I'm going to hit undo a few times. So I'm going to try and make it a bit easier for you guys. So we're going to write the heading. Social Pyramid. We're going to write Social Pyramid. And we're going to draw this out together as we do it. Okay, so our heading should be at the top of our book. Social Pyramid. And hopefully you've drawn a margin. You know what, I'm going to be... I'm going to do what I expect you guys to do. And I'm going to draw my margin with my ruler. So I've drawn my margin with my ruler. Hopefully you guys have as well. I'm going to make a quick adjustment to the recording. So if I can get my mouse to the other screen, but it's not moving. There we go. No, that's going to stay there. I want to move this so that I can move a little bit. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Perfect. So we're back to our social pyramid. I'm going to be writing in black because I like to write in black. So we're going to start right at the top and we're going to draw a tiny little triangle. Because right at the top of our pyramid we have the one person that's in charge. And this is our Pharaoh. The Pharaoh is kind of like the king of ancient Egypt. He was viewed as a god and as a way for the people to connect with their gods. So whatever the Pharaoh said, that was the rule, that was the law. The Pharaoh was, at least in the way that they viewed it back then, the most important person in all of Egyptian society. So we're going to write down next to Pharaoh that he was worshipped. Well, my pen stopped writing, there we go worshipped as a god comma and linked 
the people to the gods. Full stop. He made all of the rules full stop. As you're writing this down, if you need to pause the video to get that done, go right ahead. I don't mind if you're pausing and then coming back to the video as we're going through. So we're going to move on to the next part. And the next part of the pyramid gets a little bit bigger. So I'm going to get my ruler back out. just to separate these parts. No, I need to stay here. Okay, sorry, as my pen goes over certain parts of the screen, it tries to open up other sections, so I apologize. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so that I can write a little bit more. Okay, so over here, we have our That's a little bit messy, so I'm going to, no, as I try and rub out a little bit more, gets rubbed out. Government officials. So just like in today's society, the ancient Egyptians had their own kind of government officials. These were all of the people that looked at all of the different jobs and all of the different things that had to be done in the Egyptian society. When we look at Australia today, Australia is still part of the Commonwealth, which means that the Queen is still in charge of Australia. Making sure that everything that the, that the Queen wants gets done, our government works to make sure that everything runs smoothly. And we still answer to the Queen. The government looks at schools, hospitals, everything that needs to be organized to make society run smoothly. And when we're looking specifically at ancient Egypt, the government officials answered to the Pharaoh. They gave the Pharaoh advice and tried to help him make decisions. Now I hope you guys can forgive me. I'm going to make a quick adjustment to our social to our pyramid here. You guys can leave it however you've done it in your books. I'm just going to make it flow a bit better with the way that it's drawn. And there we go. So the government officials were the people that answered to the pharaoh. They told the pharaoh everything that was happening and they tried to make sure that everything went really smoothly. They were kind of like the politicians of today. Why is it not removing? Okay. I'm going to leave that then because that's all I wanted to change. Okay, next we have our soldiers. The soldiers had, again, a similar role to the soldiers of today. Similar, but a little bit different. They made sure that Egypt was kept safe from any invading countries or any invading armies. So they made sure that Egypt was safe from outside enemies. They also 
made sure that everyone in society was doing what they were meant to do. So the soldiers kind of acted as the police within society. They made sure that all of the servants continued with their pyramid building. They made sure that everything, that no one was stealing, that all of the markets ran smoothly. So with our soldiers, we're going to write that they kept Egypt safe. So they kept Egypt safe from invading armies. If my writing is a little bit messy, I really apologize. They acted like our police do, comma, and protected people. Full stop. If you need to pause this at any point, please go ahead. Okay. I'm running out of space just a little bit, but if I move it, I've got a whole lot more. Next we have craftsmen. If you need to move, um, go through different parts of the video again to have another look at what you've missed or to see the screen in a better position, please go ahead, pause, rewind, do what works for you. Next we have our craftsmen. These were the groups of people within the Egyptian society that made things. They made pots, they made paper, they were the people that made things using all of the different natural resources that they had. Alongside the craftsmen, so I'm going to clear out this line a little bit. This layer of our pyramid had another group of people. With our craftsmen, it also had our merchants. Now what our merchants did is they would buy and sell different things. So they might go to another country and buy something, buy silk, buy herbs, spices, buy something and then sell it to the people within the Egyptian society. They might even buy a couple of different things, mix them together and make a better product using many other products and sell it for an even higher price. What? Okay. I had a heart attack and thought I lost all of my work. They bought and sold things in Egypt. And I'm going to write in, bla in brackets just to help you give you guys a bit of a picture. Think of a marketplace. So when we're looking at what Egypt is, if you have absolutely no idea, kind of think like Aladdin. The merchants were the people in the marketplace that were selling all of their different things. Um, to all of the people.
Sorry for that. Okay, now we have our farmers and I'm gonna move my page a little bit because I can see that my head's starting to get in the blocking mode. Next we have our farmers. Just like in today's society, our farmers were the people that um, harvested, that planted, took care of and harvested plants and animals. So planted and grew plants and animals for people to eat. And in our one group, just beneath our farmers, we have our servants. I really hope that I didn't lose that. I'm sorry, sometimes my thing closes, it's not the best. Did it really lose everything? <sighs> if there was something that you hadn't copied down yet, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, rewind a little bit, and write that down. I'm going to continue this from where we were up to. So we had our farmers here. Um, here we had our craftsmen and our merchants. Here we had our soldiers. And here we had our government officials. Now, your, your pyramid should have a lot more information than this. If you... I'm fairly certain you guys didn't lose your work like I just did. This whiteboard function on my um, on my computer is a little bit glitchy sometimes. So we just wrote down our farmers that they grew and harvested plants and animals for the people to eat. And the bottom group, we have our servants. The servants had the worst job in ancient Egypt. Their role was to work for no money and to build or take care of whatever needed to be done, pretty much. One of the jobs that the servants had to do was building the pyramids. They were even whipped by the soldiers and treated fairly badly to, to get them to work faster and faster. So they worked for the Pharaoh for no money, full stop. It is thought that they built the pyramids. Now, I wrote down that... <sighs> Sorry. I wrote down that it is thought that they built the pyramids because that's what most historians think. We don't have any video footage of what took place back then and that's because they didn't have video cameras back then. But based on the hieroglyphics and what we've seen what historians have seen from ancient Egypt, it is thought that the um, that it was the servants that built the pyramids. So, now we're going to look at our second learning intention. I can understand what different roles people had in ancient Egypt. And we looked at all of the different groups that people had in society and um, what jobs that they did. And we drew up our social pyramid. Now, before we move on to the next one, we're going to have a quick look at some of the clothes that the people wore. 
So this is an example of one of the um, the images that was found on the, um, on the pyramid walls. We have the man at the front over here. Probably shouldn't draw on that, but um, yeah, I'll do it in this one. So we have the man over here on this side um, with a little bit of a headdress and a nice flowy robe. Because when we look at where, where ancient Egypt, where Egypt is, it's in a very, a fairly hot place. It's surrounded by a little bit of a desert. And even though it does have the Nile River running through it, it can get a bit hot. So we see the man wearing um, a bit of a flowy robe that doesn't cover all of his chest. And the women over on this side, one, two, three, with nice long curly hair and the same white robes, but covering a bit more. As we come down, we can see what some historians think well, the, their robes might have looked like. So we see some, these are some of the soldiers. And we know that because over here we can see the bow. I shouldn't draw over that so you can still see it. But we can see the bow, the bow over here. And this looks like a bit of a club that they might use in war. And this person over here, this person, looks like they might be a bit more important. So they might be a general, not just a regular soldier. What do you think makes, what do you, th looking at the picture, what can you see that makes it look like this person is a bit more important. Hopefully you said that the clothes that they're wearing are a, a little bit different. That he has this triangular piece at the front that makes it, him look like it's a bit more, the word we use is ornate. So it's a little bit more flowy, uh, showy. It's like a bit of jewelry that shows off who he is. His headpiece is different. And instead of holding a regular weapon, he's holding a long staff. And now as we look at some different groups in ancient Egypt, here we have the king or the pharaoh wearing his nice big headpiece to show how important he is, to show his connection with the gods that they believed. Over on this side, we have the priest wearing his robe at the bottom, but also wearing this religious piece that comes over the side with the sash flowing from it. Over here, we have an architect that again is wearing the same robe that a lot of the other people wear, but has his own neck and wrist pieces to show that he's a little bit more important. He's a little bit above the regular servants and the regular common people. When doing their regular jobs, the soldiers had the same robes, skirt if you want, but they carried their weapons because without their weapons, they couldn't do their job. Here we have a commoner or a farmer. So she's carrying what she needs, but again, it's the same flowy robe that everyone else is wearing. And here we have a builder or a servant, again wearing just the robe all by itself. Nothing special, nothing extra to it. One of the things that I wanted to throw in there just for us to remember as we look into later, I did a little bit of research into what the ancient Egyptian people ate. So just like, uh, hopefully that's big enough for you guys to see. The ancient Egyptians loved garlic, just like me, if I'm being honest. Not everyone loves when I eat garlic because they have to <sighs> smell my garlic breath, but I love it. <laughs> they also ate green vegetables, lentils, figs, dates, onions, fish. Where do you think they would have gotten their fish from? Hopefully you said the Nile River. Birds, eggs, cheese, and butter. Their staple foods or their main foods were bread and beer. Now, the reason why they drank a lot of beer 
is because the water wasn't extremely clean. If something died further up in the Nile River, an animal died, or someone had put something in the water that made it, um, let's, or animals pooped in the water, as it, the river came down, the water wouldn't be clean for them to drink. It might also have different um, parasites in it. Now, when we look at our water, it all goes through a processing plan where everything gets cleaned and purified before it comes to us. So our water is perfectly fine to drink. But they had to drink something that they knew was clean and couldn't be made poisonous by anything that they couldn't see. And their breads were sweetened with dates, honey, and figs or dates. <laughs> dates and dates. So dates, honey, and figs. Um, dates are a dried fruit that from memory comes from a palm tree. Honey is the like goldish liquid thing that comes from bees. <laughs> and figs is another kind of fruit. Now we're going to finish up with a quick look at what the difference is between ancient and modern. I'm going to be a bit lazy. I don't want to reconnect my keyboard. Actually, before we do that. So now we're going to have a look at, I can understand the difference between the terms ancient and modern. I'm going to go back to writing in black pen. Is it going to let me move? No. If I do that, is it going to? No. no. Okay. I'm sorry. Give me a second to get my page down where I need it. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the ter difference between ancient and modern. In your workbooks, I want you to write ancient and modern. And I want you to pause the video here and write what you think the difference is between ancient and modern. So I want you guys to pause the video and write your understanding. Ready, set, go. Now, when we look at the difference between ancient and modern, we can get really, really deep into what the differences is, or what the differences are, sorry. But we're going to just start off with this, an easy understanding. When we look at something that is ancient, it's something that is old. Or existed a long time ago. And then when we look at something that is modern, it is fairly new. And I'm going to put new in little speech marks. It's fairly new, full stop. It existed fairly close. to today's society. Now, the reason why I put new in our speech marks is because when we look at ancient, we're looking at thousands of years ago. When we're looking at modern, we're looking at hundreds of years ago. So even though a hundred years might not seem like a might seem like a long time, it's fairly modern compared to the thousands of years ago that ancient Egyptian society took place in. So we're gonna scroll up. Hopefully you guys have shown me by uploading to the Google Classroom what you know about ancient Egypt. Hopefully you can understand the different roles people had in ancient Egypt and in the society. And you can understand the difference between the terms ancient and modern. We've completed our mind map and we've done our social pyramid. Now in the Google Classroom, I've got some questions and answers that I want you guys to work through. I want these question and answers written out. Question and answer in your workbook so that I can see what question you're answering. Because sometimes I get a bit confused and I forget 
I'm, I, I struggle to work out what question you're answering with that answer. And I might think you're wrong, but you're just answering a different question. So in your workbooks, questions and answers, and I want these uploaded to the Google Classroom. If you have any questions at all, please email me or any of your other classroom teachers. We're still here and we're still always supporting you in everything that happens. If there's something that you didn't understand in today's lesson, let me know and I'll do my best to help make it a little bit clearer for you. Thank you all for watching and good luck. Now I'm trying to get, there we go. <laughs> Bye.